This is the one that I, this is what you came to hear, hear about tonight. Finally, we're going to talk about what we're going to do to fix these problems. And it's very simple. Well, how to fix our dysfunctional government. Our founding fathers did not design the type of government we have today where money influences everything. That wasn't their design. But nor did they know it was going to happen. In fact, I don't think anybody knew it was going to happen. The, the money just crept into our system very slowly, like the frog in the boiling water. Does everybody know the story of the frog in the boiling water? Some don't, so I'm going to look forward to telling you. Apparently, a frog does not uh, notice things unless they move very quickly. He doesn't, you know, if a fly goes by, he can grab it. But, if, you know, if an ant's walking by, he doesn't even see it. So we are that frog. And we are floating in, a, in, a, uh, in, in water, which is the bureaucracy of our government. So if you put a frog in the water and you put the pot on the stove and you turn the heat up very slowly, that frog will just sit there without noticing the change and he will die without ever complaining, and he'll be cooked, and that's the end of it. So we're that frog, and the water is our government, and the heat underneath has been the money, and the money has crept into our system, and very slowly it's getting ready to choke us. Costs candidates millions of dollars to run for office. The average congressman spends 20 to 30 times his annual salary to get the job. Now that's important. I mean, I know you people understand that because that's why you're here. But think about it. Who would spend 20 to 30 times their annual salary to get the job? Oh, well, wait a minute. Maybe if there was another motivation, maybe if there was some other reason you know, that we don't know about, that might cause them to do it. Well, it's that other reason that we don't want in Washington. We don't want anybody in Washington who has any reason whatsoever to be there other than the well-being of his country and his government. So now I want to talk about this. This is probably the most important thing of tonight's discussion. It's the philosophy of decision making. Who makes decisions, why, and what is their motivation? Let's look at a jury. Supposing you had a small company, and your, and your company was being overrun, or there was something illegal was being done to your company by a big corporation, and you sued. All right, now you're, you're in court. If you're successful, you're going to continue with your business. If you're not successful, he's go they're going to drive you out of business, and you, you're, you're in trouble. Your family's in trouble. So on the first day of court, the judge says, OK, we have a jury pool of 100, but we don't have much time. So let's, um, let's just ask the jury who wants to be on the jury. So they ask the jury, how many of you guys want to stay here for the trial? Out of 100, only 25 say they want to stay. Then the judge says, OK, how many of you really, really want to be on the jury? And a whole bunch of people are saying, yeah, 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 I want that free lunch and $10 a day. I want it, I want it. So now you've got 12 people sitting in the jury that really, really want to be there. Your life is at stake. Your company, the success of your business is in the balance. And you're saying to yourself, do I want this? Do I want people sitting in the jury that really want to be there? I don't think so. The other example is, Corporations. If a corporation has a, has a board of directors and they need another board, somebody on the board, do they, does the CEO say to the, all the stockholders, who will pay me the most to be on the board of directors? 10,000, 100,000, 200,000? One guy says, I'll pay you a million bucks to be on the board, but you've got to give me four years. CEO says, great, you got the job. Is that how corporations do it? It's not how they do it. Corporations want to be successful just like our government should want to be successful. Corporations go out and they select very carefully the people that are going to sit on the board. They go and get the smartest, most experienced, uh, savviest people, men and women they can find anywhere in the country, and then they compensate them very handsomely and say, please, please, come. Come and sit on our board and share your knowledge with us. Now, my question to you is, why can't we have a government like that? Is it out of the question? Why can't we have a government that has the municipal responsibility like a jury, but has the brains, the wisdom, and the experience like a board of directors? The fact of the matter is we can do it. You and I together can make this happen. It's very easy. Here it is. The United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 4. Please allow me to read it. The times, places, and manner of holding elections, 
for the senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. It's that simple. It's over with. Every state decides who they're going, how they're going to elect their representatives. So what has happened is we started out with the best of intentions. You know, in 1780 or 1790, you know, we selected people. Everybody else was busy working and making a living, but we selected people and said, look, you've got to come and help us manage this new country. You know what the Constitution requires? Senators and representatives, you know, the, the Constitution requires that they meet. Do you know how often senators are required to meet? The Constitution says once, at least once a year, once a year, on the first Monday in December. That's a little different than what we have today, isn't it? But <clears throat> we have a bigger and a more complex society, so we have to meet more often. But we can choose who we send to Washington. We don't have to choose millionaires, movie stars, jet pilots, uh, athletes, and people. And these are the worst, the ones that are really, really entrenched in corporations, really where the corporations have them in their back pockets, their buddies are on Wall Street. Those are not the people we want in Washington. Uh, this is a little something you might want to make a note of this before you go home. Government has only one purpose, to government, to govern. In other words, entertainment was never part of the Bill of Rights. They do not have to entertain us, they only have to govern. Here's how we're going to do it. Very simple. New York has always been a leader. We're one of the first in lots and lots of areas, so we're going to be the first this time around too. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to get the governor uh, to select the candidates from the general population. Now, we don't want to select people like you select a jury pool because we need, this is our, you know, this is the United States of America. We, you know, this is a big government, this is a big economy. We have a lot of stake here. So we have to go out like a CEO does and pick our people out of the public and get the best we have to go to Washington. Well, why would they do that? Well, one of the reasons they have to do it is it might be a municipal responsibility that we could impose upon them. The second reason they might do it is because we're going to take extremely good care of anybody we choose. And we're going to take care of their families and so on and so forth. The third reason they might want to do it is they're not going to have to move to Washington. Because if our new leaders, our new congressmen, our new senators, whatever they are, if they don't have to worry about being reelected, if they don't have to worry about a, a campaign fund, if they don't have to worry about um, uh, special interest groups and political action committees and major donors and co corporate benefactors, they don't have to worry about that. They're, it's like they're on jury duty. They're there to solve a problem. I'll bet you our senators and congressmen could work one, maybe, maybe two days a week tops, and they'd be done and then we'd fly them back. We got the smartest people in the country making decisions without being influenced by money or anybody else. And all we have to do is convince the governor of, of the state of New York that that's what we want. We don't want millionaires and movie stars being selected. We want smart people. Now, the way we do that was we would appoint an independent agency like a Price Waterhouse or something, and they would select a huge pool of people in the state of New York to have the capabilities. Some of you might even be in the pool. And then every time a candidate comes up for election, Governor Cuomo would turn the drum, he'd pull out one, two, three, four names, he'd post the resumes, we could look at them, we could study them, we could ask questions, we could interview them, we could see them on the television, we could do everything would remain the same. Everything would remain the same. And then we would choose our person and he or she would have to go and serve their time. Everything else remains the same. We're not changing the government in any way. Okay, we've gone over this. New decision-making body would be totally independent and devoid of all outside influence. Here's all you have to do. We've got to get this started. I am not going to do this by myself, and I can't do it by myself. Got to go to that website, the Planet Occupier website. Put down your name, your email address, and your zip code. This does not mean that you are... I don't know, joining some seditious group to undermine the government. All this means is you've had enough, you're tired, you want to get the money out of it, you want to change the system so it goes back to the way it used to be when our forefathers set it up. All you have to do is do that. When we get up to, let's say, 50,000 names, 
I will send to you the petition. I will show you what the legislature is going to look like. And when we get everybody behind this in unison with the, with the reforms that we want, we will present it to Cuomo. If that's not good enough, well, then we'll get 500,000. He has no choice but to accept our wishes because we are the voters. We hired him. He didn't hire us. Now, just signing up is just the tip of the iceberg. This is what comes next, and this is extremely important. You must get everyone you else you know to sign up. We've got to get this to spread. We've got to get this concept to float. We've got to get more people to sign up so that we can submit this petition to, to the uh, governor. Go ahead. This is the web page you go to. It's called the Savaya Manifesto. I'm very proud of this. I designed it myself. And up there, who do we have over there? We have. Um, Adams, uh, Franklin, Washington, and Jefferson. These are the people who built this country. These are the people who made the Constitution what it is. These are the people who started democracy. And look at them. They're fading in the background. But look at us. This is us in the foreground. We're stark. We're, 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 uh, we're angry. We want change. And we're going to say something about it. But we don't have to march to Washington to do it. We don't have to stand in the tidal basin and wave signs. We can do it with the internet. All we need is get people involved. Get everybody you know involved. If we can do this, then America can be a world leader again. America led the Industrial Revolution. America led the Technological Revolution. But right now, I think you'll all agree, America is losing its edge. We're not the country we, were, we once were. And what's missing is we don't have, we're not focused on a problem, like the Industrial Revolution or the Technological Revolution. We're not focused on alternative energies as we were back in 1985. We need a goal. We need something. This is something to pull the country together. It's like World War II. I mean, I wasn't here, but I understand that there was rations. There was long hours. There was low wages. There was lights out at night. But nobody minded because we're all Americans and we're all doing this together. The difference is, and it's not a small difference, back then our goal was to hate this man with a little funny mustache. He was very easy to hate. Well, we don't have a man with a little funny mustache to hate. We just have to intellectualize the problem. We have to know that oil is over with. Resources are running short. Water is short. Food will be short. I mean, no, we're not in starvation. But I'm saying as the planet gets warmer, it'll be less productive. And we're adding 200,000 people to the planet. So we either sit here and wait for a more chaotic situ situation, or we get some leadership in Washington in hopes that they can lead us down the right path. 